Hello and welcome back to another tutorial. This time we're going to be looking at player prefs and how we can use them to save simple data. Player prefs are a built-in function in Unity that allows you to write either a string, int, or float to disk. There are lots of saving methods out there, but player prefs are by far the fastest to implement and the easiest to understand. Even if you understand other methods like saving your own binary files or saving files into the cloud, player prefs still come in handy as a quick method for prototyping and an even suitable for some basic games. They do however have their downsides, and there's three major ones to note. Firstly, it can only save the three data types, so string, int, and float. That means that more complex data structures can't be saved down. It is possible to do things like a vector three where you save down three floats, but it can become quite tedious because when your game has multiple of these and you're saving three per vector three, you end up with a whole lot of references to these things, which brings me to my second issue. The second issue is that they are saved individually and loaded individually, which means that you end up writing a whole lot of code to save down information and just as much code to then load it back in. Of course, you can write some functions to handle these things, but as the data becomes more complex, this becomes a bit more difficult to do. Finally, the third reason is that because I'm writing the data to disk, there's no transferability across devices. If I play a game on my phone and I then want to move to my tablet or PC to keep playing, it'll be like I'm starting the game again. Because of this, it's not the first option when you're building a game that's a bit more complex, but when you're building something simple that only saves simple data, users generally aren't too worried about moving over to their PC or their tablet, and it really can suit quite a lot of game styles. All that being said, player prefs are a tool that I still use when I'm prototyping because absolutely nothing beats it for speed of implementation and immediate results. When I want to debug something and make sure that what I'm doing actually works, player prefs are the first thing I go to. So let's jump into the code and look at how we actually implement this. So now that I'm in Unity, I've got a blank canvas open and we can see that I've actually imported a fantasy wooden GUI free asset. This is just an asset pack that I grabbed so that things would look a little bit nicer. It's free on the asset store. I'll put a link in the description so you can pick it up as well if you'd like to follow along, but it's not necessary for the tutorial. So the first thing I'm gonna do in my scene is I am going to create a panel. That will automatically create a canvas for me. I'm not gonna worry about scaling this canvas or doing anything with it, but with the panel, the first thing that I'm going to do is grab one of these UIs and let's say we get this large stone board. I'm also gonna remove the alpha off of this. Oops, let's remove the alpha off it. In my panel, I'm going to be adding in a image. That image is going to be a board UI parchment. I'll just click set native here to set it to its right size. Hold alt, left click, top align it. To it, I'm going to add a text mesh pro text. If your text mesh pro has not been imported in the project, it will ask you to do that, but just click OK. It will import it and make it nice and easy for you. We'll call this one saved points. And I will rename this saved points text. That can be saved points background. Then I'm going to duplicate this with control D. Move this down a little. I'm going to call this one current points background and current points text. Just make that current as well. Oops. Last thing we're going to need here is a text mesh pro button. Just make it a little bit larger. Yep, so I can drag it a bit easier. With this text mesh pro button, I'm going to be adding in a button and we will take, that one looks fine. I will set native on this as well, just so it looks a bit nicer. In the text here, we'll call this one add points. I'll set the color to white so it can be seen. Change it to size 35, that seems okay. I'm gonna call this add points button. And now we're ready to get into some code. So I'm going to minimize a bit of this. Then we're going to add a folder. We'll call that one scripts. And we're going to add a script and we'll just call this point counter. Okay, open that up in Visual Studio. Okay, we are going to need to be using TM Pro. That'll give us a reference to our text mesh pro elements. Then we're going to add a public TMP text asset. 
and we're going to call this one saved points and let's call it text another one of those and that's going to be our current points we're going to have an public int for current points and a public int for saved points as well so we'll just change that to saved points and now we'll get a reference to our button. So we'll have a using unity engine.ui and we're gonna have a public button and we'll call this add points button. And I might just get rid of the capital A there. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to need is an add points function. This add points function will be adding one to our current points. So every time we add current points, we'll do current points plus plus. And then we just need to update our text. So current points text dot text is equal to current points dot to string. And we might just add a bit of text to the front just so we know which one is which. So we'll call this current points and then a space and a plus sign. Okay, let's test this out very quickly. We're gonna add a couple references into our project. I'm gonna add this to our panel. If we had a game object that was our game manager or so, it would get added to that, but it's not necessary for, for this project here. So we've got our save points text being our save points text, current point text, current point text, and our button is the button that we have. Now to our button, we're going to add the function here on click, drag in our panel because that's where we dragged our script onto. We've got our point counter and we've got our add points function. So we'll save that down. And then when I hit play, every time I click this, I can see that it adds in points for me. And right now it doesn't do anything else, but we've got our basic adding of points. Okay, so now we're going to create a save, load and reset function. So I'm going to duplicate this button three times. We'll drag it up here here and here and just fix that up a little bit there we go that's fine we're going to call this one save points button we're going to call this one our load points button and we're going to call this one our reset points button update the text for each of them Okay, now we've got our points in here. Right now, none of those do anything, so we're gonna to need to write a quick script for them. That is gonna give us a public void save points, a public void reset points, and a public void load points. And I'm just gonna put that round that way because it makes it a little more sense. Okay, so our save function is going to be saving our current points to a player pref, which we can then load. The load function will then be reading that player pref and writing it to our save points here. Now the reset function will then also delete the key and remove the player points. Okay, so now it's time to use our player prefs class. So this class is static, can be called from anywhere without any other references. We're going to add a dot here and we're going to see the methods available to us. The methods are broken down into effectively four types. You've got your saves, which is your sets, plus this save here. You've got your gets, which is your loading. You've got your deletes, which is what we're going to be using to reset. And then we've also got our has key. Now has key we'll get into a bit later, but basically it's just to check if something does exist there already. So it's good to understand the way that player prefs actually work here as well. The method requires what is known as a key pair value. So when we're saving some data into player prefs, we give it a key and that key might be called current points as an example. And then I need to assign it a value as well. When I want to load that data, I, I ask for the key and it will tell me what the value of that key is. Now that might sound a little confusing, but the concept's quite basic. And the more you use it, the more you'll become very familiar with it. So I'm going to be doing a set int here and I'm going to be saving in and I'm just going to name this. This is my key. I'm going to name this current points 
And for the value, I'm going to give it the current points because that's the points we're at right now. When I load points, what we're going to be doing is player prefs dot get this time. So get int. And then all it's going to ask me for is the key because it's then going to give me the value. So I'm going to say I would like whatever the value is in current points. And note that this is case sensitive. So you really do want to be spelling this correctly. There's actually quite an easy way to get around ever having typos in this. And that is just to create yourself a public string and we will name it uh, player prefs points. And now inside of here, I will use player prefs points and the same again here. So that just saves you from making typo mistakes because when you type in a string here, I can type anything and it will never give me any IntelliSense to say I've done it wrong. Uh, just very useful especially if you're crossing over multiple scripts, I would really recommend giving that a try. Now, the other piece that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to actually be displaying these points here because we've got the value now, but we haven't stored it in a variable. We haven't done anything with it. So we are going to be calling this saved points, which is what we've got the variable we created up above. And then we need to update our text. So we've got our saved points text dot text is equal to saved points dot to string. And remember, again, it's just nice if we add a little bit of information at the start. So we'll call this saved points and a plus sign. This will save and that will load. And then finally in here, we have our reset points. Now there's two ways that you can do this. In player prefs, there's a delete all. This will delete every single player pref in your project. Because we only have the one in our project right now, that's fine. This is useful when you want to do a very quick restart. So basically pretend that you're a brand new person logging in for the first time. It's very, very good when doing version control, making sure that the things you're deleting, you aren't relying on player prefs being in there to load your game. Uh, but other than, outside of that, you really only want to be using this player prefs delete key. And again, remember everything works off the key. So I'm just going to be giving it player prefs points, which is my little string here. And then I just need to update my saved points text again, because we're going to be resetting that. And we're just going to set it back to saved points. And that's fine on its own. Okay, so now we're going to hook this up and we're also going to have to type in what this is. Now the string that I put here doesn't actually matter because I'm using it in the same place everywhere, but I'm just going to call this current points. In my reset function, I'm going to change this from add points to be reset points. In my load points function, load points. And in my save points function, save points. Now I can see that when I hit play on my game, I can add points, get up to 11, hit save points, add a few more, hit load, and it should load in the 11 that I saved. I can then save my 17 points and hit load again. It will now load in 17. I can stop the game and start the game. And because it saved it to disk, it will load in the 17 points straight away. I can then reset my points. It wipes it out, close the game, reopen the game. It will load in nothing this time. Add some points, save, load, reset, and you get the picture. Everything works. That covers player press for this tutorial. I hope you've been able to learn something from this and you can now save simple data in your project. I'll be doing a more in-depth tutorial next week showing you how you can use this to unlock levels in your game. So please be sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I've had such great feedback on my videos recently, so I wanted to say thank you for all the encouragement. I'm still learning how to do this YouTube stuff properly, but I am doing my best to deliver the best content I can. Thanks guys, see you next week.